Hello viewers, today we'll talk about OSI model. So we all of us know that there are seven layers in OSI model. So let's go through all those. So we have total seven layers, which is application layer, presentation layer, session layer, transport layer, network layer, data link layer, and physical layer. The upper layer is related to software, which is application, presentation, and session. And transport is the heart of the OSI model. So application layer allows us to access the network resources. Presentation layer uh, is used to translate, encrypt, and compress the data. Session layer is to establish, manage, and terminate the session, API sockets, and WinSockets. sockets. Uh, then we have transport layer, which is to provide reliable process to process message delivery and error delivery. Then we have the network layer to move packets from source to the destination to provide internet networking. And uh, we have data link layer, uh, which is used to organize bits into frames and to provide hop to hop delivery and then we have physical layer to transmit bits over a medium to provide mechanical and electrical specifications such as coax fiber wireless hubs and repeaters lower layers are related to hardware as well so osi stands for open system interconnection so osi model uh, is open system interconnection model is a conceptual model that provides a common basis for the coordination of ISO standard development for the purpose of system interconnections. In the OSI reference model, the communication between a computing system are split into seven different abstraction layers, physical, data link, network, transport, session, presentation, and application. The model partitions the flow of data in a communication system into seven abstraction layers to describe network communication from the physical implementation of transmitting bits across a communication medium to the highest level representation of data of a distributed application. Each intermediate layer serves as a class of functionality to the layer above it and is served by the layer below it. Classes of functionality are realized in all software development through all and any standardized communication protocol. Layer 1 defines devices, electrical and physical aspects, for example, cables, connectors, electrical signals, and uh, pinouts, etc. It provides the physical interface between a device and the transmission media. Layer 2 is for data link layer, which provides the transmission protocol that controls the data flow between network device. For example, in networks, which data packets are encoded and decoded into bits, flow controls, and error checks in layer 1. The layer has two sublayers media access control and the logic link control layer. Communication are functioning of the application layer. Then we have layer 3, which provides routing and switching te uh, technology that routes variable length of data packets from source to the de destination uh, network. It creates logical routes, virtual circuits, which transmits the data from one network to another. Layer 3 includes packet, IP, ICMP, IPSC, and IGMP. Layer 4 ensures complete data transfer in error-free in sequence and with no losses or duplication, for example, TCP and UDP. The transport layer controls a link's reliability through flow control, segmentation, and uh, desegmentation, and error control, providing the transfer of data between end users. Layer 5, layer five of the OSI model handles the management, establishment, and termination of connection between two end users of a network communication session consists of a request and response that occurs between applications layer 6 translates data for application layer for the network encryption and authentication for example ssl and tls and data compression are processed in presentation layer layer 7 is the layer that handles the end user direct interconnection with the application for example ssh http and dns resource evaluation synchronization and communication are functions of the application layer so in OSI model, each layer in the OSI model has its own well-defined functions and the functions of layer communication which communicate and interact with the layer immediately above and below it unless the layer does not have layers below or above. The Internet Protocol Suites has separate models, has separate model, the layer of which are mentioned in RFC 112 and RFC 1123. The model combines the physical and data link layer of the OSI model into a single link layer and has a single application layer for all protocols above the transport layer as opposed to the separate application presentation and session layers of the OSI model. Now, what are the advantages of OSI model? So, it helps you to standardize roads, switch, motherboards, and other hardware. It reduces complexity and standardizes interfaces. It facilitates modular engineering. It helps you to in ensure interoperable technology. It helps you to accelerate the evaluation. Protocols can be replaced by the new protocols when technology changes. It provides support for connection-oriented service as well as a connectionless service. It is a standard model in compute networking, supports connectionless and connection-oriented services, offers flexibility to adapt to various types of protocols. Now, the first four layer is a responsibility of the host. 
which is application presentation session and transport layer and uh, the responsibility of the network is network data link and physical layer the upper layer of the OSM model mainly deals with application related issues and are implemented only in the software the application layer is closest to the end user both the end user and the application layer interact with the software application an upper layer refers to the layer just above the another layer. The lower layer of the OSM model deals with data transport issue. The data link layer and the physical layer are implemented in hardware and software. The physical layer is the lowest part of the OSM model and is closest to the physical medium. The physical layer is mainly responsible for replacing the information on the physical medium. Now, we, along with the OSM model, we also have TCP IP model, but uh, OSM model and TCP IP model is different. Both have some differences. So OSI model provides a clear distinction between interface, service, and protocols. OSI uses the network layer to define routing standards and protocol, whereas TCP IP doesn't offer any clear distinction point between service, interface, and protocols. TCP IP uses only the inter internet layer. OSI model uses two separate layer physical and data link to define the functionality of the bottom layers. TCP IP uses only one link layer. OSI model, the transport layer is only connection oriented. Whereas in case of uh, TCP IP model, a layer of the TCP IP model is both connection oriented and connectionless. In OSI model, the data link layer and the physical are separate layers. In TCP IP model, the TCP, uh, TCP data link layer and physical layer are connect combined as a single host to network layer. And in case of OSI model, the minimum size of the OSI layer, OSI header is 5 bytes. And in case of TCP IP model, the minimum header size is 20 bytes. So if we we'll, uh, revisit again, so application layer is the layer that provides the services to the user. Presentation layer is the responsible for translation, compression, and encryption. Session layer is used to establish, manage, and terminate the session. And transport layer is to provide reliable message delivery from process to process. Network layer is responsible for moving the net packets from source to the destination. Data link layer is used for error-free transmit transfer of the data frames and physical layer is to provide a physical medium through which the bits are transmitted. Now there are multiple protocols which works at the various level such as in layer 7 application SMTP, HTTP, FTP, POP3 and SMP used. In presentation layer MPG, ACH, SSL and TLSL used. In session layer NetBIOS and SAP used. In transport layer TCP, UDP used. In network layer we have IPv5, IPv6, SEMP, ARPM, MPLS. In data link layer, we have RDPA, PPP, uh, frame relay, ATM, fiber cable, etc. And in physical layer, we have RS232, 100 base, TX, ISDN protocol, which is used. So, thank you so much for watching today's video. And if you think the videos are helpful, do like the video and subscribe to the channel.